Hello and welcome to a new episode of Underground, the show that brings you the latest from social media platforms. I am Muntaha Muazzin. Let's start today's show with a collection of videos. As the war rhetoric continues, Americans are shouting out loud, no to war on Syria and hands off Syria. Activists on Facebook and Twitter are creating tags and hashtags to pressure the congressman to stop any plans of war on Syria. Also, many anti-war activists shared YouTube videos calling for an immediate help to the anticipated assault. This one video on the issue is created by a Lebanese journalist. Let's take a look. The UN says there is evidence that chemical weapons have been used in Syria, but it suspects rebel forces are responsible, not the government. The war in Iraq should have never been authorized and should have never been waged. Should have never been fought. Keep in mind, I'm somebody who opposed the war in Iraq. I'm not interested in repeating mistakes of us basing decisions on faulty intelligence. Images can be very dramatic. Coverage can be despairing. But reality is much more powerful. The truth should come from facts and not from images. Chemical weapon use is a myth till proven otherwise. A war is being designed based on clouded facts. This war is a strike on humanity. Not a strike on Syria. More Syrian children will die. More American soldiers will die. Can America afford this war? Don't give us another Iraq. Don't do the same mistake. You can do it by diplomacy and negotiation, not bombs, Senator McCain. We cannot afford we cannot afford to shed more Syrian blood. In the same context, we prepared a clip that summarizes the reaction of some influential American figures using social media websites regarding Obama's plans to onslaught Syria. Good evening. Twelve years after we were attacked by al-Qaeda, twelve years after 3,000 Americans were killed by al-Qaeda, President Obama now asks us to be allies with al-Qaeda. That's how Senator Ron Paul slammed President Barack Obama's plan to onslaught Syria. However, it wasn't only Senator Paul who criticized Obama. Several American figures did the same on social media websites. Republican Senator John Duncan posted on his Facebook page, My office received around 600 to 700 calls, emails and faxes, and only 11 have been in support of bombing. I'm not sure I have seen such a strong reaction on any issue. Senator John Culberson also posted on his Facebook page saying, I believe the House vote on the resolution authorizing the use of military force in Syria should be held on September 11th, the 12th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks. This will give clarity to the debate and by defeating the resolution, the House will honor the victims of 9-11 by refusing to support Al-Qaeda. The American politician Phil Gindry criticized Obama's speech. Obama's ego is beyond belief. While discussing Syria, the president said he consulted with my military. No, Mr. President, it is the military of the United States of America, not yours. And finally, the American business magnate and author Donald Trump tweeted, the terrorists in Syria are calling themselves rebels and getting away with it because our leaders are so completely stupid. A video created by the Dutch-Iranian filmmaker Bahram Sadigi uploaded to YouTube shows him phoning the American National Security Agency to retrieve a lost email. 
The conversation is meant to criticize the USA for its monitoring policies on Internet users. What did he get in response? Let's see. Um, hello, my name is Baram Sadegi. I'm calling from Holland, from Amsterdam. Is this NSA? Uh-huh. Okay. A couple of days ago, I received an email, and by mistake, I deleted that email permanently. Okay. I went to a specialized uh, computer shop in Amsterdam to redo uh -huh. my mistake and get the email back. And they uh -huh. said they couldn't uh, help me, um, but... Uh, they said maybe your uh, organization, since you are, have a powerful and trustful governmental organization and you keep uh, track of a lot of emails and internet data, maybe you could help me? Okay, this is something that we wouldn't actually be able to help you with. Um, who is your email, like who hosts your email? That's probably who you would need to contact. So you don't keep track of uh, emails of people? We're not going to be able to retrieve something that you deleted that's ah, not what we do yeah I see. um but do you mind if i just take down some information from you yeah for our maybe since you're home? yeah okay and your your first name again by the way by the way maybe i have to add this piece of information because the people from the internet shop they said that since i'm originally i'm born in iran you know, uh, or Iran, as you probably pronounce it. And, but I live in Amsterdam for uh, 26 years. And uh, I have some, f some of my friends work in the media. I travel a lot. They said maybe I am a kind of person of interest for NSA. All right, well, that's not something I can help you with here. Like I said, you would probably want to contact whoever hosts your email to have them pull up whatever you deliver. I, I have a Gmail. Is that what you mean? Yeah, so you would probably want to contact Gmail. They asked you. You don't work with Gmail or Google in general together? This is not something that we'd be able to assist you with. Oh, uh, so maybe I rephrase, I should rephrase my question. You don't work together in cooperation with Google? Uh, well, I, I don't know. I, I just hear and I take phone calls. Um, if you mind, if I just get some contact information for you. Yeah. But, okay. And your first name? Excuse me, ma'am. One more piece of uh, information, maybe. Do you have any idea whether you have like a sister organization in Holland or in Europe? You know, like a NSA from Holland and strong and trustfully sister organization in Holland who can help me? In technology, the technology battle between phone companies reached its peak in the last couple of years. Experts conducted comparisons between the different releases of these brands, coming up to various conclusions. Recently, Apple issued an iPhone 5S, but the product didn't satisfy many. This video is making fun of the new smartphone by Apple. Let's take a look. Here at Apple, we are obsessed with breaking new boundaries. And today, we throw all of that out the window, and yet somehow, still break boundaries. We have found a way to sell the exact same iPhone a year later, changing nothing but the name, and sell millions. And we call it the iPhone 5 S. The S stands for same. What this tells us is that people don't really want change. Their love for Siri proves that ignorance is bliss. They still want to go on unforeseen adventures with Apple Maps. And they still prefer the phone to auto hang up on phone calls with annoying friends. So it would be stupid to change what is already perfection. We decided to spend more time on marketing because all that time added up is time added up. We laid off our entire engineering staff to show how dedicated we are to this new direction. We have become incredibly innovative without exception. We're breaking new ground every day on how to deceive our mindless, loyal customers. We have decided to take our world-famous secrecy public by taking the same secrecy to the products while you have them. We haven't even put the new name on the back of the iPhone 5S, so you too can be just as deceptive as we are. The new iPhone 5S is 
Definitely the best phone. Actually, we did change one thing. Your existing cables will no longer work. Introducing the magical new cable, the Lightning. S. After our collection of videos, we will show you the top topics circulating on social media. The actuality and timing for a possible military strike against Syria is debated on social media. Users are commenting on the statements by the world leaders, on the consequences of the war, and on the fear mounting among civilians due to the continuous war threat. A campaign of condemnations to the Arab leaders was witnessed on social media regarding their positions in the war rhetoric against Syria. Netizens went critical after some Arab countries accused Syria of using chemical weapons, giving the green light for the Western military intervention in the country. A large social media campaign against the U.S. President Barack Obama was launched to denounce his plan to attack Syria as well as to criticize U.S. officials' statements on the possible war. Netizens gave sharp comments to the president who promised to be against wars and compared him to his successor, George W. Bush, who launched the Iraq War. They also called on him to stop fooling the American public by giving them false excuses for any possible military action. Now, let's stop for our short break and then we will be back. Women's rights redefined. Welcome back. Joining us via Skype from Kiev is Mr. Abdel Majid Akil. He's a Syrian contributor to the Act of For Peace, Vote No to War Against Syria Facebook page. He's also a freelance writer and a social media activist. Welcome to Underground. Thank you so much and greetings to you and to everyone. As an anti-war activist, we're happy to have you here. But I would like to know more about how are you involved in the a campaign to be against the war on Syria? For sure. Uh, first of all, it is well known to everyone that the vast majority of Syrian people are uh, against any military intervention, any foreign military intervention on Syria. So, our job in this campaign is to gather those people to organize uh, their efforts and to help them, providing them with mechanisms to uh, help them 
uh, deliver their voices and messages to the congressmen to urge them directly to vote against the war on Syria and indirectly by uh, contacting uh, with uh, American citizens and activists to uh, influence indirectly the American uh, the American public opinion surrounding those people. And besides that, our campaign is not only present, uh, present in the virtual world and uh, social networks. We had already uh, participated in organizing tens of uh, peaceful demonstrations in the States and everywhere around the world of Syrian people, American people, and a lot of people supporting peace and shouting their voices mm -hmm. loud, uh, telling that to stop war against Syria. What about the social media activity and specific here? Because we're talking about social media. So uh, I've seen that you have a Facebook page. Maybe you've signed some petitions. What can you tell us more about this? About uh, how we work exactly, yes? How we work on social media, via social media. Uh, via social media, how we work exactly. Okay, our page, when anyone likes our page, mm -hmm. so he will be always updated with all of our updates. Mm -hmm. uh, that we make on our page. We put the links of congressmen and uh, a lot of American activists and journalists and we gather people, we organize uh, the efforts of people uh, providing them with some united messages translated to English for sure and uh, helping them how to deliver those messages to the congressmen and to people who elected those congressmen, mm -hmm. I mean American people. Mm -hmm. Are so your messages, are, yes, are your messages delivered to the congressmen? Have you witnessed any feedback or did you get any message in return? For sure, for sure. You can find the answer of your question on the pages, mm -hmm. on the official pages uh, of congressmen on uh, social uh, media websites and on their official website. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of them stating clearly that uh, the anti-war campaign was a prior reason of them changing their uh, opinions from voting yes to war to voting no to war and we always on our page on our official page of our campaign we uh, update our uh, followers uh, about the results of their work and we put uh, always names of new congressmen who change their opinions mm -hmm. with making uh, direct links and references to their statements and the locations of their statements mm -hmm. what do you respond to the people uh, that say sometimes that uh, you are working for the Assad government or you are a pro-Assad in this anti-war campaign. What's your reply to this? Our reply to this, I would like to say first of all that uh, our campaign and the numbers of people who joined us in only one week shows that we represent millions of Syrian people, the majority of Syrian people. Those cannot share the same political point of view. But for sure, they share the same national and moral principles, uh, refusing any military intervention, foreign military intervention on our country being the simplest of them. Another thing I would just ask, uh, I would just like to ask one question to everyone speaking from this perspective, and especially Syrian people. I would like to remind them how from 10 years we were all Syrian people against any military intervention or against the military American attack on Iraq. I would just like to ask them one question. What did you call from 10 years people who were supporting their country against the, the, the American attack? Did you call them as supporters of the government or people defending their country? And what did you describe people who were happy with America, Iraqi people happy with America attacking their country? Did okay. you call them freedom seekers or did you call them traitors? I will just leave the answer of this question to expose their disgusting uh, hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. So uh, have you been threatened in any way due to your activity on social media? Threatened for sure. We always receive some uh, messages from people, uh, from some traitors calling uh, for an attack against our country. You know, they call us with uh, like supporters of dictatorship and like this, they always face us with those uh, blames those accusations but simply we do not care we are defending our country we are doing our best to mm -hmm. defend our country and that's it we don't care about anything else mm -hmm. the overall here do you think that your efforts are gonna be fruitful and the war is gonna be stopped against Syria 
We hope so. The results that we have already got are uh, all positive, and uh, especially that the American public media, uh, public opinion, mm -hmm. is uh, on the side of us. Those people always who told their officials, who told the congressmen that they must represent them and who they elected them, uh, they always tell them, like, we didn't elect you to send our people to die in Syria. We didn't elect you to employ our money uh, in business war. We, we elected you to uh, employ this money in education, in healthcare, in uh, public services, and so forth. So when those, their officials here come to face them, with the excuse that mm -hmm. but we are Americans not selfish and we have moral and humanitarian duties uh, towards Syrian people here it's our turn to show those American people to face them with the fact that their media the Western media have been making a falsification of facts and that their officials are lying and that we the major the vast majority of Syrian people are against this war mm -hmm. so okay. uh, Congress will have no more excuses in front of their people and mm -hmm. like uh, Congressman Justin Amash just said they will need to clean their offices Mr. Abdel Majid Akil thank you so much for joining us on underground today you are a Syrian freelance writer and a social media activist Moving on to social media news and views. The cyber war taking place between the Syrian Electronic Army and the U.S. media outlets is mounting after the hacker group was suspected to be responsible of the attack on the New York Times website two times last month. The FBI Cyber Division Advisory released a memo that encourages websites to contact the local FBA Cyber Task Force in case of a suspected cyber attack. This move comes after the group is threatening to widen its activities in case the U.S. launches a military offense against Syria. The hashtag Syria continues to trend this week. Using the slogan Syria another Iraq, tweets are pointing to the presence of a historical analogy between the war on Iraq and the anticipated one on Syria by the United States. Users wrote it seems like 2003 all over again. They also criticized Obama's administration for using the chemical weapons attack as a pretext for a war on Syria the same way he did before in the Iraq war using the false excuses of weapons of mass destruction. Saudi Arabia is monitoring a tweet by lawyers in another blow to freedom of expression in the absolute monarchy. According to the Ministry of Justice, Saudi lawyers are subjected to punishment depending on the content they post. Using Twitter, Saudi netizens responded by establishing a hashtag under the name the Ministry of Justice is monitoring lawyers' tweets. Using the hashtag, tweets describe the Ministry of Justice as the worst in the country. And others wondered if lawyers who use the law to protect us from the brutality of the regime are afraid. What is left in their country? What will this country turn to? A stork made social media buzz in Egypt after it was accused of espionage and arrested. The stork has a device on its feathers, later found to be for study purposes. Egyptians didn't spare the incident to quack up jokes. They created a hashtag titled Spy Duck and tweeted the jokes. Finally, the bird was served for dinner. The microblogging site Twitter reacted to the scandal of the young U.S. researcher on Syria 
whose studies and opinions were cited by both Senator McCain and Secretary of State John Kerry to promote their plan of war on Syria. The writer who wrote an op-ed to the Wall Street Journal lately on Syria was fired from her job at the Institute of the Study of War for faking her academic credentials and losing any credibility to her work. We end our show for today with an amateur video taken in Japan of a herd of deer surrounded by cars and pedestrians on a street in central Japan. The deer seems ignoring the surrounding as well as some people who seemed less interested while others started taking pictures and stopped for watching. That was all on Underground for today. Our thanks for watching. Bye-bye.